In this video, we're gonna be talking about traveling while being vegan with ulcerative colitis, and also why I took a little break from YouTube. Hey, what's up? It's Vince Leah from VinceLeah.com. And if you're new here to the channel, I do a lot of videos around plant-based nutrition, including healthy hacks, recipes, taste tests, shopping videos, and more. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss a thing. And if you're not new to the channel, you may be wondering what's been going on with my upload schedule. I was doing three videos a week for a really long time, and then it kind of dwindled down to one video, and a couple things happened in my life over the past few months that led me to make the decisions that I did, and I wanted to share those with you today. So back in the beginning of February, uh, I had to put my 16-year-old Husky Lab Mix down. And like I said, I had her for 16 years. I actually had her since she was about nine weeks old. And I woke up one morning and she just didn't look right. Now, obviously since she was older and she'd been getting weaker over time and she wasn't eating as much as she should. So I knew things weren't working and I, and I knew she was having some trouble. But when I woke up and I looked at her, she just didn't look right. It looked like she wanted to throw up, but she couldn't and she couldn't go to the bathroom. So I immediately just put her in the car and took her to the emergency room that's not too far from the house and explained what was going on. And they did an x-ray and said she had a twisted stomach. And the two choices were either you have surgery to fix it or she was gonna die. Now we did have dog insurance, so that made the decision a lot easier. Now a few years ago, she had surgery for cancer and the cancer never came back, thank goodness. But I could tell like she really started to slow down after the surgery. And I always said if she had to do another surgery for cancer, I'd want to think about it and see like how long would she have to live compared to what her life would be after the surgery. But in this case, I really didn't have time to think about it. It was either do the surgery or she wasn't going to make it. So we elected to do the surgery and waited a few hours and the doctor called and said the surgery was a success. They said, they opened her up and the organs looked really well. They said you couldn't tell she was a 16 year old dog and they twisted the stomach back, everything was fine, stitched her back up and they said just come in tomorrow because she really wants to, they really wanted her to rest that day and see how she's doing and take her home. So I'm thinking, okay, good. I mean, obviously there's gonna be some changes, there's gonna be some caring for her, but everything was fine. So the next day we went to the hospital and she was really weak. She couldn't even walk to us in the little visitor area they had. They, they literally had to help her along. And you know, I always said when it was time to go, she would tell us. And the way, like the look in her eye, it was almost like, like I can't take this pain anymore. And then I really felt like she was telling me that it was time. And you could tell she wasn't the same dog, like that life, that energy was missing from her. And talk to the vet just to make sure like, is she on anything that would be causing her to act this way? Obviously she was on some pain medication, but not as much that would cause her to be looking like this. And it was really hard. I, 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 I felt that, but I said, okay, what, what options do we have here? And they said, well, you could keep her here just to see how she does and see how she recovers over time. So we spoke to the doctor and decided to wait one more day since she wasn't even eating any food and she wasn't eating well before the surgery, she didn't have any resources to pull from. So she didn't have a lot of muscle left and it was really hard for her to walk. So I decided to give her one more day to see if she would start to eat anything and to see how she felt. And so we went there the next day and she still wasn't walking on her own. And when she laid down next to us, um, she couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom. And that's when the quality of life that she would live moving forward, it made me realize that the best thing for her would be to put her down, even though it wasn't the best thing for me at the time, it wasn't what we wanted to do. And it was one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make, um, I mean, Rocky had been a part of my life for 16 years. She was the one constant in my life after all that time that I knew was gonna be there every day. And it was really difficult and it hit me a lot harder than I thought it would. And I think just not being mentally prepared for that. It just, I knew she was getting older and the time would come that we had to do that. 
but putting her down and, and coming home and then looking at the places where she normally was and the places she would normally sit and the things she would normally do, it, it was a really hard ad adjustment for me. And I just didn't really feel like being on camera much and, and making videos because I really felt like I needed to give my body and my heart and everything just time to heal after going through that. Now, I don't really want to get into the whole grieving process that I did. I feel like that's taken this, this video off on a tangent a little bit that I don't really want to go to. But if you want me to make a video about that, let me know in the comments. And looking back, I realized that I didn't include Rocky in a lot of my videos. And I did find some videos from about three years ago when I was still pretty awkward on camera where we did a road trip and we took both Rocky and Sharky, who's our beagle, and included them in a lot of the videos. So normally I wouldn't link such old and awkward videos, but I will go ahead and link those videos in the description box below if you want to see her. And I did want to give one shout out to Jennifer Selzer. I did post a picture of Rocky on my Instagram account after she passed and she left me a comment that she remembered those videos of seeing Rocky in them from that long ago. So Jennifer, if you're watching, thanks for being such a loyal member of this community. Uh, I really appreciate it. So after Rocky passed and a few other things happened in my life that made me really shift a lot of my attention to taking care of myself rather than making videos. And one of those things was a trip that I made down to Ecuador. And normally a vacation and a trip would cause a lot of excitement and a lot of joy, but this trip actually caused um, just some anxiety for me since the last time I had taken a trip to Latin America, went to Mexico, and I had a really bad colitis flare, probably the worst colitis flare I've ever had. I did a video about that. I actually vlogged that whole trip down in Mexico. I did a video every day. Um, I'll link those in the description box as well. And I really didn't know what caused the flare. I didn't know if it was the food I was eating. Uh, I had a lot of mosquito bites. So a lot of different things were going on. And doing research for this trip down to Ecuador, and then looking at the videos and some of the food pics I posted on Instagram and seeing what I was eating, I was eating a lot of juice, a lot of fresh fruit, a lot of salads, things I thought were healthy, but realizing that a lot of that food was probably washed in tap water and maybe not dried. And since I was eating that every day, that may have been the cause for my flare. I don't know for sure, but going down to an area of the world that caused that colitis flare last time was really making me nervous about going there again, but we had to go down there for a personal reason, so I wasn't gonna vlog that trip, and I didn't post on Instagram as much as I normally do when I go on vacation, just because I really wanted to be present um, during this trip. So I decided that all the food that I ate on this trip was gonna be cooked, it was gonna be bland, it was gonna be super simple. I just wanted to take that worry over the food I was eating out of the equation so I could enjoy the trip. And one of the things I found was finding vegan food, whether it was in Mexico or in Ecuador, was really easy. I mean, they have a lot of vegan restaurants all over the place, and a lot of the restaurants you go to can make dishes vegan pretty easily. It wasn't a foreign concept to them. Um, it was really easy to do. My biggest fear was just the food I was eating and how it was gonna affect my colitis. And one of the things that made this trip so amazing was the hotel staff we were staying. Now we stayed in Quito, which is the capital city of Ecuador, but we didn't stay in downtown. We stayed in a hotel closer to the airport and it's called the EB Hotel, EB Hotel. It um, stands for Euro Builders. And the staff there was just amazing. Now the lady who runs the restaurant at this hotel, her name is Daniela. And she basically took care of me. I, I saw her as soon as I got there and she said, just come see me when you wanna eat. We can make anything vegan. Uh, there's a few dishes that are already vegan. We can just take a few things out of some other dishes um, and we can make all your food through filtered water. Just come see me and we'll take care of you. And they took care of me. And not only did we meet Daniela, but she also introduced us to the chef at the restaurant, which was uh, Chef Henry and he made some absolutely amazing dishes. Now, the first night we were there, we ordered from the menu and they made it vegan, but then we were like, you know, 
maybe there's something else they could do. So we basically said, just create whatever you want. As long as it's vegan, you know, we'll give it a try. So the first night he created this lentil and quinoa mixture with a bunch of veggies on top and some sauce that was absolutely amazing. The next night he made a, a barley pasta with some amazing sauce and hearts of palm. And then the following night was a lentil burger with a portobello mushroom on top. I mean, everything he made it was like gourmet vegan food. Normally I wouldn't eat at a hotel when I'm on vacation as much, but we did go out of the hotel on our trips and we'd get some lunch and we'd eat lunch and it'd be like, this is okay. But we were actually looking forward to going back to the hotel for dinner because Chef Henry was making just this gourmet food that was out of this world. It was tough to leave because the food was so good. The entire staff at the hotel and the restaurant basically took care of us in the morning. I'd go down there and I actually started eating some fruit. I ate some bananas and pineapple, just fruit with thick skin. And they made smoothies every morning. And if I wanted stuff added, they'd add it to the smoothie. Um, just really amazing staff. And I can't say enough about the hotel and Daniela and Henry and everybody there. It made the experience of going back down to Latin America so enjoyable because I had amazing food that I enjoyed, full of flavor, and no colitis flare. So the entire time before this trip that I was worrying about what I was gonna eat, was I gonna find vegan food, was basically for nothing. I found some amazing vegan food, and I didn't have a colitis flare, and I realized that as long as you do all your preparation, do your research, be thorough about it, I actually did a whole vegan travel series with my friend Kit and Karoy. I'll link that below. Uh, applied some of those concepts on this trip, and it worked out great. So with this trip and everything else going on, I really started focusing on my overall wellness, taking care of my mental health and my physical health and just making those a priority and not worrying about the things that I can't control. Because all these other factors that go into wellness are just as important as eating the right foods. So I just wanted to share these experiences with you so you can understand what I've been going through and why my upload schedule has been a little different, but things are about to get back on track. It feels really good to be back and to connect with you and to make this video. So let me know in the comments what you thought of it, what you thought about these different topics. Like, subscribe, and remember to keep living fit from food. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.